In this video, we're going to take a look at Blazing SQL. This is a GPU enabled SQL engine that is particularly designed for ETL, Extract Transform Load. This is the pre-processing that you're using to get your data into deep learning or other systems such as that, machine learning in general. Now this is just a part of the whole Rapids ecosystem, including Dask. So this lets you use SQL ETL type transformations just as part of the whole pipeline, keeping everything in the GPU as you get to machine learning. This is just the first video in a series that I'm doing on Blazing SQL. Are you interested in Blazing SQL? Do you want to see how you can use just a simple GPU, simple to configure compared to a cluster of low powered machines on a Spark network, for example? Let me know with a like, let me know in the comments, and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything as we go through and look at how you do some ETL with Blazing SQL. We'll eventually get into something where I'm pulling in data across Wikipedia and doing some pre-processing that I tried for a Kaggle in class competition that I wanted to do with my students uh, just a few years ago, but could not fit it into a single machine. So let's let's see where I can go with that. So Blazing SQL, you can see sort of an introduction to it here in terms of just getting into it with Python. You bring in this Blazing context. And what's very neat about it is you just literally put your CSV files. CSV is one type of file import. If you want more performance, you're going to probably want something like Parquet, which is common in the Hadoop Spark ecosystems. And then you can literally just run this across this SQL command and display the results. So now, I mean, the thing about SQL, I have come through over my 20 years, I guess, as, as a computer programmer, as a computer scientist, I have probably learned 10, 15 different syntaxes and object styles that all do exactly the same thing as SQL. SQL, love it or hate it, it has been here a while and it will be here a while longer. It's a common lingua franca of transformations of data going into whatever system you're dealing with. So let's go ahead. And again, it's like it says, no database needed. You are just using your GPU or GPUs. And this really is why you have GPUs like the NVIDIA A6000 that I'm going to be using on this that have 48 gigabytes of RAM or the things like the Quadro RTX 8000 that also has that amount of RAM, but on, on the previous generation of, of GPU architecture from NVIDIA. So the first thing, let's go ahead and look at how to install this. And this, this is the part that can, that, that can be a little bit off-putting. You do need to run this in a Unix environment. If you look at here, OS support, Ubuntu and CentOS 7. So these are basically what it's supporting. It's pretty good on GPU. Pascal are better. And then CUDA, it does use the 11 version, which, which I have installed on this machine. So this is good. Installing, they give you a number of options here as far as installing this. You can install it in Conda, probably with a separate environment. I would definitely, definitely recommend. You can install it by, by a Docker. I'm going to show you that real quick in this video, just, just to get started. You can build from source. I have not been brave enough to try that yet. And you can also use Blazing SQL Notebooks. I'm going to do an entire video on that, just seeing how to get into the system that the company behind Blazing SQL gives you to make use of the think of think of Colab, except it is specifically designed for Blazing SQL. I can kind of see why they're creating their own sort of Colab-esque environment because one, 
Collab is a complete moving target. Google breaks my code routinely. Those of you that follow my class along know this. They, they install something new and what you have is now broke. It's not like a Docker image. You're, you're, you're writing notebooks to deal with that underlying changing system as, at the whim of Google. The other reason I believe they're interested in creating their own notebook server is you can buy premium services of this. And we'll talk more about that when we get into, into looking at it, running it through the Blazing SQL notebooks. The 10 minutes to uh, Blazing SQL is a pretty good uh, a tutorial. We'll see something kind of like that. It just shows you that you're able to do really the the general sort of SQL operations that you would expect in this sort of thing. I really like on my computer here running this from Docker. Now you can see from my screen around me, I am running this on Ubuntu. And this is the environment I use a lot of times for my videos on this channel. You can, what I'm showing you will work really on, on any environment. You are supposed to be able to run this in WSL2 as well. Now getting WSL2, at least as of March, 2021, Running with the NVIDIA driver is not the well-trod path. You have to install the, the Windows early release versions, which also make your computer extremely reboot happy, which is not always nice for running run, long running jobs. So WSL is its own odyssey to, to go down if you want to run this under Windows. If you want to run it under Ubuntu, that's easy mode. Uh, we're, we're going to look at that right now. So you do install via Docker. They give you the, the, the prerequisites. You do need NVIDIA Docker version 2. I am running that already on this machine. It's not too hard to install under Ubuntu. You want the latest CUDA driver because then you're going to have CUDA drivers inside of your Docker image that will run whatever's supported with this. This is great for these kind of packages because basically you're able to run them it's like an appliance. You just plug your microwave in and you don't care what kind of voltage regulator or Faraday cage it has or anything like that. I don't know a lot about microwaves, but you don't have to get inside of it. So you, you copy this line here, basically. And I already have Docker installed. So you can see sudo docker images. So these are the Docker images that I have. These none ones are just ones I was playing around with. You can see I already have Blazing SQL installed on here. Otherwise, it takes a while to pull that completely down. They have sample data built right into there. So that's why it's it's pretty big. 13.76 gigabyte. My my full stack web development friends would have would flip out over that. They think probably 13.7 megabytes is, is too big of a Docker image. But in machine learning, that, that's just kind of what, what you see. I, I mean, I PyTorch, I have a number of other things. I, I even have a mining instance set up for when I was doing a video on how to mine crypto mine because you have to put binaries in there and I want to basically use Docker to isolate. So let's put their command in and that's it. You have to run it as sudo because that's how Docker is. Run, the runtime's NVIDIA. We are mapping port 48s to 48s and this other port as well. Not sure what the other one is for. I'm thinking that's HTTPS. Not sure. I'm going to use uh, all 8s. And this is the name of the image out on Docker Hub. Now this Docker image that they're giving you here is built very much for what I would call interactive mode, meaning it immediately launches a Jupyter notebook server. I may or may not want that as part of an ETL pipeline. In fact, I most likely would not. However, in that case, what I would likely do is just build my Docker image right off of theirs and just give a, a separate final execute command that would run whatever I wanted to have run, which would probably be a batch job to process some segment of my of my pipeline. So let's go to localhost for eights. 
This confused the heck out of me for a moment. So I will mention this password or token. It's Rapids. Often you get like a token here, but nope, they that's being disabled for security reasons. Perhaps let's go ahead and log in. I don't want to save that. And now we're in Jupiter Lab. Now, what I highly recommend and I will be doing on videos that further along in the series, especially when we start processing Wikipedia data, is I will mount volumes from my hard drive because these that you see here, this is not my computer. This is the Docker image. So we need to mount something from from my higher speed M2 hard drive onto here so that we can we can make use of that when we start to map CSVs and ultimately parquet files that I'll be generating from Wikipedia exports. So this this is all basically ready to go here. They do have a few files in here. I mean, you can go to terminal all the all the normal Jupyter Lab kind of stuff. If you go into Blazing SQL, they do have some data available to you. So you've got basically parquet files here available. The the sample taxi, 99 megabytes, 31 31 megabytes. These are not exactly gigantic files. Iris, oh, I know that's huge. No, I'm kidding. And these are basically just showing some of the types of files that that you may want to to deal with here. So I am just going to go into the welcome file just to quickly show you that this is up, up and running. Here you can see that the Blazing SQL import context, you can simply run that little star comes up. This takes a moment because it's got to have everything going. Now, when you're trying to install this directly into the host rather than using Docker, which which is more difficult, this can be tricky to get up and running. This is the moment of truth where you're like, yes, it, it, it brought it in and, and no real no real issues. And here you can see we're, we're getting some of the data in. So I, I like how just completely low level this is. I'm going to fast forward until that little star is gone. So this is still continuing to come up. My understanding of how Blazing SQL works is it's going to use as much of that GPU RAM is, as is useful for caching, for speeding up your performance. But if you have less memory, it's going to be OK as well. So adding on more memory should be I don't think it's like TensorFlow or PyTorch, where if you load too big of, of a neural network into your GPU's RAM and the RAM is just not there, that it's just going to, to blow up with a resource outage exception like I've seen many, many times. All right, so that completed. Now, and again, this is just going through the very simple SQL that they provided as part of the BSQL, the blazing SQL examples. I will get into much more kind of my own creation of data to go into this. So definitely subscribe and let me know if you're interested in this kind of thing with a like. That is how I know that you're interested. So I think this is really cool. You basically can run this create table command that you have here. That is essentially mapping the taxi, the CSV file from the taxi into Blazing SQL. And here I, I can basically just list the, the values. It does have a header. So those from the CSV let you know the uh, the, the the columns that you have available to you. You can also limit it. I mean, all the usual SQL sort of commands that you have here. And this is showing to how to, this is essentially a, a CUDA data frame that you're getting back from these. So that's like a normal sort of pandas-esque data frame that you can do usual sorts of pandas things on. So this fits really nicely into ETL GPU based workflow and you can do any SQL that you want. I can do select star from taxi where passenger count is greater than five. 
I don't know, how many people can you fit into a taxi? Wow, you can fit quite a few into a taxi as it turns out. And I assume I could even do order by messenger count descending. And basically, there it is. So wow, nine people in a taxi. I mean, that's a taxi van, I'm sure. But that gives you basically an idea of getting into this. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in seeing more on Blazing SQL, definitely subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and let me know in the comments what you're interested in as we go through this.